YouTube. Today we finna make a hard ass beat. That's all I gotta say, man. Hey, if you like the video, go ahead and drop me a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Cause I got videos coming every Monday and every Friday. And the beats be banging, my nigga. Let's get into this thing. All right, so we in FL at 150 BPM and we in the key of D sharp minor for this one. We got this noir, noir, pure, noir, noir. God damn. And man, look, this is the melody we got. It looked complicated, but it really ain't even that deep. Let me uh, zoom this thing out a little so y'all can see the whole thing. And I'm gonna play this. All right, so that thing looked crazy, man. But if we could zoom back in here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off all the effects and we're gonna break this down real quick, so. Very simple, man. So basically all we're doing here is we start with our root node, D sharp, right? Boom, we put down this D sharp note and we're just gonna pull it up two octaves. So we'll take this note here, shift click to duplicate it. And then we're gonna control up on the arrow key, control up on the arrow key again. We're up here with it. So boom, all we're doing is making a D sharp minor chord. And we can do that if we have our scale highlighting on, we just put down the note on D sharp, skip a note, put one down, skip a note, put one down. From there, we're just gonna pull this back a little bit here like that to strum it out. So this is what it'll sound like now. Cool, right? So then we're gonna take this same D sharp note right here. We're gonna highlight it, shift click to duplicate and control up one more time. Pull that up an octave. Gives it a little more range, you feel me? From there, man, all we're doing is we're just gonna put off these half steps. So I'm gonna put this F sharp here and I'm gonna put this F here. We got these two tension notes, so it's gonna add that dark feel to it. Very simple, man. We're not doing anything crazy yet. So we're gonna go ahead and shorten those in, and then we're gonna put another note right here and right here, just to give it a little bounce, you know? So this is what that sound like. Boom. We got half our melody right there already. So now the last thing we're gonna do is just add a couple more notes for tension. So I'm looking for these little spaces that are right next to each other. So we're gonna put the A sharp here. And what we can do is put the, this F sharp right here, right? Because what's gonna happen is it's gonna lead back into this D sharp here. Cause once I had this part of the melody, all I did was copy that over, literally. Copy this note over, boom. And that's how I made that. And now for the second half of it, I just switched up this little part here. And really all I did was move a couple of notes around. So if we take this out, let's grab this one, right? Let's pull it over. Boom. All right. So look, we got the same F sharp and F here as the last time. And all we did was we took these, this F sharp and F here and we move that down to B and A sharp. So that's crazy, man. We're really not doing anything too difficult here. So really we just repeat this same melody just over and over again. But what gives the, the melody more movement is our bass notes. So from this D sharp, if we duplicate this over here, we're gonna move it up five notes. One, two, three, four, five, boom. Now I hit this G sharp here. And then from there, we're just looking for some more half steps to give it a dark little feeling and ending. So I move that up to B, move this down to A sharp, 
And another reason why I wanted to end on the A sharp is because if we go back to the top, this chord here, right? What's in that chord? We got D sharp, F sharp, A sharp. So if we end on a note that's in that chord, it'll lead back into this another note that's in that chord. It's going to sound good. So. Very, very simple, man. Nothing crazy there. And then to give it a little bit more variety, I just took this exact melody, duplicated it over and pitched up an octave control up on the arrow key. And that's how we made that whole melody, man. So first we had this effect rack on this reverb 201 preset. So I'll actually turn them on one by one. And I turned this down 55% on the uh, mixer there. So. So that effect really spaces it out with that reverb. Then we added a half time. We got the half time on this little half loop setting here. And then we also turn this down to about 60% here. So that gives it that low end, that bottom really fills it out. That just really, you know what I'm saying? Did, did a little something to it there. And we have this uh, Pugue Child 670, basically just like a compressor, just to kind of bring that piano in a little bit more, kind of glue it together a little bit more. And we also have this EQ just taking out some of the lows. So all together, this is all the effects. That's clean, bro. All right, next we're in the symphony orchestra. We had this uh, strings, violins, one on the long preset pause. So this is what that sounds like, man. Very simple, bro. So basically all we're doing here, we're pretty much following the root notes of the melody. Um, now, technically the exact root notes would be something more along these lines. But, you know, sometimes you don't always have to follow just the root notes. So I just decided to pull it up to that F sharp just cause I like how it sounded. And also if you look at it, that F sharp again, is also in the chord that D sharp minor chord. So it's a perfectly fine note to use there. And then, yeah, from there, we're just pretty much using these half steps and just making a nice little rhythm on top of the melody root note, and then back to the half steps. And we're pretty much, like I said, just following that the melody itself on the second half is the exact same pattern. The only difference is at the end, instead of that F sharp and F being at the bottom here, I just pitched it up an octave simple. And for the effects, I simply have this fruity stereo enhancer. Um, and I think I just set it to this four strings preset. And that's all that's on there. All right, next we got this symphony orchestra. We have it on the uh, tune percussion and we have this glockenspiel. So this is what that sounds like. So this is pretty much just using the same melody from the piano for this section here. I just copied that over um, for the initial part of it. We're just pretty much doing the same thing as the rest of the melody. Uh, we're on the root note on these half steps. And then we're just kind of looking for half steps from there and just creating a nice little bounce with it, man. For the effects, we have this shaper box too on this pan preset just so that the bell is kind of moving between your ears. As you're listening, just for a nice little, you know, saying touch for the listener. And next, we have this Reese bass. I just got out of 
some kit somewhere. So this is what the reach base sounds like. Very simple. Again, we're just following the root note there. All right, boom. So once we had our melody pieces, we came into the playlist and we threw in some extra like accents and textures. So first, I have this uh, producer grind cadence texture called Writings. Nothing too crazy, just adding some vibes in the background there. Uh, I think the real sauce of this melody came from this accent here, or this phrase. Um, it's the vocal phrase, Vico. So I took two versions of it. Um, well, it's the same thing, I just pitched them. So basically, this is what they sound like at first. If I have them right there. So basically what I did was I chopped those up like this and I just pitched them both and this is what it sounded like. So that just added a real cool kind of bounce to the melody, man. And it's like, a, you know, some authentic kind of sounding strings almost, but it's a little glitchy too, so it's hard. And then from there, we just added in this crossroads accent. Just as like some ear candy in the melody. So um, once I had that all together, I just rendered this out by pressing Control Alt C to turn it into one waveform like so. And boom, man! I had our we had a whole melody there. So this is what it sounds like. Crazy. Man, when the melody is that hard, the drums basically handle themselves, man. So let's go and break this thing down real quick. So now we got the simple clap here. Nothing crazy. Then we got this snare on top of that. Different little bounce. It's hard, man. We added this uh, snare roll at the end. You know what I'm saying? Just to sauce it up a little. We got a very simple two-step hi-hat pattern. Just playing with the velocities a little bit here. Open hat. And we got this little rim shot in here as well. So all together without the 808, this is what our percussion sounded like. Crazy, man. So let's go ahead and get into this 808. With the 808, real simple. We just got to follow our root note. Make sure we got a cool little bounce going. So this is what that thing sound like. Nasty, man. Nasty. So at the end here, with this little roll, this is a little sauce for y'all. 
essentially all we did was we went from this A sharp and we just kind of rolled it down real smooth into this A sharp or octave lower. For me personally, I like when I have 808 notes at like A, A sharp, B, that range, because you can really play with the octaves on some cool stuff when it's when you got that range there. So come on, man. That shit is too hard. And that's our beat, man. It's simple, hard as hell. I mean, you had to do too much. So let's hear what that thing sound like. Uh... set it off. Alright y'all boys, hope you learned something in today's video. Hey man, like it if you haven't already. Sub if you haven't already, because you know we got the videos coming. We'll be back on Monday with it. I'll let y'all.